Today I'm going to make some hexagon shaped coasters, almost entirely on the miter saw. Previously I've had some fun making square coasters, but then I thought it would be fun to make some that are hexagon shaped instead. And yes, I know hexagons are the best again. Now I'm not setting up for a big production run, I just want to have some fun in the shop and make a few coasters. So my chosen method is something quick and simple. So this is what I want to use to make my coasters. These are some off cuts from some cutting boards that I made and then I resawed them in half. So they're a little over a quarter inch thick. But this is the good stuff. You don't want to practice on the good stuff. For that, I have a piece of plywood that's roughly the same width and you want something fairly long because you need a, a bit of a fence and you need a practice piece. I've already practiced once off camera and then I made four inch hexagons but I find them just a little bit big. So I'm gonna go for like three and a half inch now. So I'm gonna take my good stuff and my scrap and I'm gonna rip it all down to three and a half inches on the table saw. So that should be the only cut on the table saw that I need. Everything else should be on the miter saw. And by the way, I don't have one of those high-end fancy miter saws. This is just your basic yellow compound miter saw. I, I do have a pretty decent fine tooth crosscut blade, but yeah, I don't think you need a Festool. I mean, mine, mine did it when I was practicing, so here we go. So first we're gonna take it off 90 and we're gonna move it to 30 degrees. And then we're going to lock it into position. So I'm going to do all my cutting on the right side, but I need a stop on this side. So we're going to take the scrap piece of plywood and I'm going to cut it roughly like that. Now this piece is going to get flipped over here and it's going to become the stop at which we're going to put all our hexagon pieces. So this, this is going to need to be clamped over here. I don't really have an easy way to do it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a, another piece of scrap along the back so I can clamp it to the back of the fence. I can now take this and put it here and I have a way to clamp it, but where do we clamp it? That's what we need to figure out next. So let's take the other piece of our scrap plywood. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna mark the center and I've got my square set here for inch and three quarters. That is gonna be the side of our hexagon. I don't even care what the length is. I just needed to know the center mark. So back over here, I'm going to bring the blade down and I'm just going to nibble over until I'm just at that half inch mark with my cut. I actually went too far on my first cut so I flipped it over and I put another pencil line and we're going to try to nibble a bit closer. So now I'm going to take my fence and I'm going to put my work piece against it. I want to slide the fence over until we've just got so that this distance to the blade is that distance. And I'm gonna fiddle a bit until I'm sure. And I'm gonna just slip this away and just gonna draw a pencil line there, just in case something slips. Make sure I'm on the pencil line there. And I can hear you saying, are you sure you've got it perfectly the right amount? And it's like, probably not. I try to err on the side of it being a bit too short because now you've got your piece I can cut here and then you can slide it over and you can cut like that and then we were just going to keep rotating it around and if it's a bit on the small side well then on the last cut it'll just shave a little bit. So here we go. I'm just going to do all the cuts on this piece and I'll just leave the camera running. Okay, that looked a little silly because I was cutting hair for some of them. So I, I think I managed to just nail the dimension, but there is my hexagon. I have enough that I can make a second one out of this scrap. So let's do that again. So there are our two hexagons. They are, near as I can tell, a pretty darn good match. Looks close enough. And yeah, actually there's a bit of a bad cut on there. That's why you practice. So now let's go ahead and Try some on my actual pieces. Actually, before I start cutting, you know, to me, the interesting wood is in the middle and I don't think I can get three. I can only get two. So, so I want my first cut to be something around there, which should get us into some interesting wood. Check that on all of these. You know, they're all gonna be like that. 
So while I was doing the practice ones, I was realizing that my hands are kind of blocking the camera a bit. So I'm going to try to do the best I can, but my hands are more important than this video. So I'm going to, I, I've moved the saw out into the middle of the shop a bit. I'm going to try putting the camera at a few different angles and hopefully we can get at least one sequence that shows all the cuts that you make to get it done. So I'm first going to go roughly alongside that pencil mark. I'm going to flip it over and put it against the fence and to make sure I'm clearing the sawdust each time. And then we turn it. And now let's get my hands out of the way. And then I turn it again and I don't need to do any cuts there. And I'll turn it once more. And there we go. Then we take this piece and we'll start it again. And that's two. On to the next one. So here I've got eight really nice hexagons. Now we're all about honesty on this channel. They are not perfectly identical. Um, if, you, if you look at them, some of the edges are off just a little bit and that could be because my hands shifted a bit when I was holding things on the miter saw. I mean, I'm just holding it with my hand. It's not clamped down or maybe I didn't quite get the fence in the perfect spot, but they are practically identical. And uh, after a bit of sanding, I think they will be identical enough. So now that you've got this 30 degree stop made, you can use it again for different sized coasters. I can move it closer for a smaller hexagon or farther for a larger one. The limitation is the cutting capacity of your saw. In my case, I'm limited to boards of about five inches in width. And now I get to spend some quality time with my sander making these things much more handleable. Okay, a little bonus footage. I wasn't really going to talk about how I store the coasters, but the hexagon makes it interesting. So I like to make little storage boxes for coasters, but I've made videos about this before, so I was going to completely skip over this process. But let's just consider the shape. Here's my coaster, and see how you grab it, and you can pull one, and you can pull one from the middle. But with the hexagon, if I make a box like this, it's like, how, how am I supposed to grab them? They're, 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 they're not grabbable if you just sort of put them into a box. Some people like to stack up their coaster storage. I don't really like that because I like to have at least six. And I think if you're piling up six, I think it's just getting a bit high. I like it better to have them on their edges. So instead of making a box where you rest the coaster on something flat, I size the box with the intention of putting the coaster in point first but I don't really want the points to just get banged up. So I need to support it. So I've got the box and I glued up a solid chunk of cherry and I cut it so it just fits in there. And I'm going to use this to cut some angled pieces. And then I'm just gonna take the coaster and I'm gonna lay it on top of the block and I want it supported a bit. So I'm gonna put the point where it's just a little bit above the bottom and I have it lined up here on the edge and I'm just going to trace it. Trace it. And I'm, and I'm sorry for breaking out the bandsaw. I know I said this was a miter saw, table saw, you know, minor tool project, but in my defense, the hexagon part was done on the miter saw. It was just, I needed a little help with the box. <laughs> Taking the point off is so I can raise up the point of the coaster. So now these two pieces can just drop into the box. I can put this in on the point. And the point, the point is not touching the bottom of the box. It's supported, supported by the ramps and there's a bit of a gap there. I can't really fit a clamp in there, so what I'm going to try doing is I will put a bit of glue around the outside of the piece, a little bit of glue on the back, and I'm going to put a little dab of super glue in the middle. This is not something that needs a lot of strength, but we will just get it and I'll push it into the corner and 
hold it for you know 10 or 15 seconds and then repeat it with the other side and there we go we'll just let that sit while the glue firms up and then we can continue on with finishing so with the box made these all nicely stack in there and yeah i actually made extra i always make a few extra because i figure some of them aren't going to turn out i haven't i need to inspect them carefully i think there's probably a few where there's a little gouge and so i just have to pick two that are my less desired and the other ones will make up the set but now with them on the point you have these nice vertical spots where i can easily grab the coaster i don't i don't have the problem like this where it's this sloped side where i can't get a grip so in terms of finishing i know i skipped it for the video but i use a polyurethane three or four coats uh because they're going to be uh, coasters they're going to get wet glasses on them so you really want the protection of a film finish like polyurethane and uh, I kind of like a little bit of shine on them. So before you leave just know that I put some links down below to a couple other videos that I thought were really good about making hexagons. One was a really good one if you want to make bigger hexagons and I also will put a link to the video. My most recent um, cutting board video just you know in case you want to see how it is I ended up with this this blank that I used to cut up for these. So that's it. Fun project almost entirely made on the miter saw. We'll see you next time.